got to be a part of the people that bring such a spirit of Christ into this region and into an expression within our neighborhoods and our communities that it changes our neighborhoods and communities. The part is that the gospel will go out with one clarion call here in South Florida. God has put our church in this city, in South Florida, for such a time as this. We are here for a reason. There's not a person who has received the gift of salvation who did not also receive a gift in order to be activated on mission. You have a, a living hope in Jesus Christ. It is the gospel that will bring back hope. God is bigger than we can fully comprehend. Over a dozen different denominations, over five counties, the churches of South Florida coming together as one in a broken and fragmented world, showing that we are the church of Jesus Christ and we are undivided. Amen. We are the church of Jesus Christ and we are undivided. So as I've mentioned, we have come together with these other churches in South Florida and we, we made a... Uh, a proactive choice. We kind of all sat together, and I, I told you a little bit about this when we introduced this, and we said, we've got to do something. The churches have got to do something. We have got to put aside our theological differences and all of those things that are driving a wedge in between God and his people. Because you see, the, the politicians and all the craziness in the world, and whether that's your political points of view or what's happening in your life or what's happening in your job, or there is stuff just, there's so much stuff going on in the world in 2020. In fact, someone gave me a piece of glass this morning that said 2020 on it, and I said, hey, could we take that on New Year's Eve and just break it? I mean, I think I would have people lined up to say, I want to throw that thing and just stomp on top of that thing and watch that glass shatter. And so we got together and we said, you know, we as the people of God, we as the family of Jesus Christ have got to make a bold statement to the world that's going to, to uh, impact our communities, impact the world. And so we're going to do that. We're going to put all of our theological issues aside, all of those things that, that separate the denominations and the traditions and the churches, big, small, traditional, um, contemporary, whatever it is. We're going to put all that aside, and we are going to do a sermon series with 100 other churches, over a dozen different denominations, over five different counties, uh, throughout South Florida. And the churches of South Florida, we are all going to come together as one and help to transform our neighborhoods and our communities and help us heal. We're going to show that we are the church of Jesus Christ and the gospel is going to go out in one glaring call so we can truly say we are undivided. Does that sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan to me. Every Christian is called to be part of a mission to share the gospel. I mean, that was, that was the Great Commission, right? When one of the last things that Jesus Christ did on earth is he said, go out and baptize people in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Right? That was our commission, to be unified. The gospel is ultimately what we rally around and where we put our hope, and frankly, the hope that our city and world has for the future. Somebody's got to take charge of it, and that will be Jesus Christ and God. He has always been in charge, and no matter who sits as leadership across this planet, God is the throne. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this worship service. We pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart are pleasing to you, O oh Father, our rock and our redeemer. We pray that all of your messages here are experienced by everyone, whether spoken or unspoken. And all of God's children say together, amen. Well, last week we talked about how what unites us 
is far greater than anything that divides us. What unites us is the Holy Spirit. What unites us is God himself, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that is stronger and bigger than any celebration you'll ever have in life and then any stress or challenge that you will have in life. And we said, well, unity, unifying together as Christians, unity is power. And yet uniformity is not what that's all about. Unity is about diversity. That in order to truly be the people of God, you gotta have that crazy aunt or uncle or, or that crazy family or set of friends or whoever it is to reach out because frankly, not everyone's gonna listen to a pastor. Not everyone's gonna be receptive to the way that I talk about Jesus Christ. But they may be receptive to the way Tucker the dog gives him a hug and a kiss and his owner says, well, God bless you. Thanks for pet petting the dog, right? That we need to have that diversity and that also unity is not optional. That's what God called us to do, that every Christian is called to be part of the mission to share the gospel. That's what we're supposed to do. And so I thought, well, you know, I could tell them about all these different things that we do as a, as a church to share the gospel and all the things that you do to share the gospel, from the mission trips to disaster relief to Bible studies to, everyone loves this one, wine study and Bible tasting, to preaching, all of those, those kind of things that we do to share the gospel. And then I kind of thought about it and said, well, let me think something that's out of the formal framework of what we do to share the gospel. And here's how it happens in my life. Put the pastor hat aside for a minute. Every day, God puts something on my plate. And God will put something on your plate. Every day is an adventure, especially these days. Even if you're, even if you're at home sitting there going, man, I am I'm sitting on my phone, I still haven't been able to get out of my house, and, and I'm just pointing and clicking all day. Every day is some sort of adventure for you, whether it's online or on site. God puts things in our lives. My father coined the phrase, coincidence is spelled G-O-D. And God just puts circumstances in our lives, and more than that, people in our lives and in our hearts. And that enables us to share the gospel. Two days ago, I ended up praying with a guy that was standing out in front of 7-Eleven. Somehow he just, I walked out and he said, God bless you, brother. And I said, God bless you, brother. I like your hat. I like your hat. He had a cross on his hat. I said, let's pray. And he's like, let's pray. It was so cool. Just happened. God just, just does that and he will do that in your life. He'll, he'll put people and circumstances and things in your life that, that just happens. So what circumstances does God have you in right now? Yeah. What circumstances are you in right now or have you been in where God has given you a chance to share the gospel? Think about those. A lot of times we don't realize them until they're over. And when you were in that circumstance, did you represent well? How'd you do? I walked away from that 7-Eleven and I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Did you see that one, God? Right? What circumstances are you put in where you can share the gospel? And that doesn't necessarily mean you're, you're walking around with a picket sign or something that says Jesus loves you. But it does mean yesterday at the air show and there's, I don't know, 25 of us on the beach all, all together and people walk by and say, what are you doing? We said, we're church. Oh, cool. We'll see you tomorrow at church, right? 12. Yeah, God bless you. Quick circumstances. Did you... Perform well on that. 
Or have you ever experienced another person doing that? Think about, capture what that moment is in your head, or maybe it's going to happen today when you leave this. How did you share the gospel? Did you share it through your actions? There's so many people in my life, they don't have to say a word. You just know they're Christians. They open the door for you and smile. Have a good day. And they're sharing the gospel that way, you know, loving their neighbors. So how did you share the gospel? Through your actions? Did you say something? Did you pray with someone? And here's even a bigger question I, I reflect on all the time is, well, why does God put me in those circumstances? I mean, why was that guy walking out of 7-Eleven at that very same time? Why was he standing there? If I would have gotten there two minutes later, two minutes earlier, we wouldn't have crossed paths. So why does God put you in those circumstances? Hey, he's God. He doesn't make mistakes. And make no mistake, when you're in those circumstances, he puts you there for a reason. And if you feel uncomfortable, guess what? You should. That's your job. Unity as Christians is not impossible. It's, it's, it's difficult sometimes being unified. But it is absolutely imperative. It's absolutely essential. Let's look at what the inspired word of God says. In Matthew 28, it says, now the 11 disciples, they were a motley crew. Everybody knows about where these disciples are coming from, right? A motley crew, they were all over the place. The 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubted. Stop. Let me preempt this for you. If someone dies and they're resurrected and they're walking around, and remember, Jesus was in the spirit walking around. When he was resurrected, he showed up in a room and you know what he said? I'm hungry. You got something to eat? He was hungry. Make no mistake, this was not a ghost walking around. Put your hands in my side. Look at the nail marks in my hand. Now he is walking around. This is the resurrected God. And this is what he says. Think about how powerful that is. And here's what he says. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. Well, yeah, <laughs> he's just been crucified. But some doubted, of course. And Jesus came and he said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Wow. Go, therefore, and make disciples. Go. It is an action word. It is a command, right? Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is a resurrected Jesus Christ saying this. He calls us to be unified, saying it's absolutely imperative that you are unified. Because you see, when we are divided, when fear is created in us, when those political ads are, are pulling you one way or pulling you the other way, they're trying to commit fear in your soul. And by putting fear in your soul, that's division. And the devil loves division because it pulls you away from God. And it stalls kingdom momentum. But unity ignites kingdom momentum. I mean, think about it. When, when people, when, when you're in a crowd, 
right? And maybe you're, you're with your best friends or your best boyfriends or girlfriends or, or just your buddies. When, when we're walking around, we used to do this thing before COVID called uh, Friday Night Sound Waves and Face Social. And we'd just all get together as a church and we'd listen to music. And people would literally just come around us. They're like, what, what's your deal? <laughs> what's, what's your deal? <laughs> you, who are you people? <laughs> well, we're church. You're a church? Right, when you see unity like that in the midst of diversity, it's irresistible to the world. They wanna know what's going on right there. And at the nucleus of that is Jesus Christ, is the Holy Spirit. What was going on when people come and say, what are you doing watching a concert? We said, we're just celebrating the Holy Spirit. We're having a great time. It creates that momentum. It ignites the Holy Spirit. And the very purpose that we have been put here for is that. That's what Jesus says. After he's resurrected from the dead. The purpose of unity is our mission, is to be together, that the world may believe in God and that everything rises, everything. Your home life, your personal life, your work life, your social life, that diagnosis you just got from a doctor rises and falls on the unity, not on the politics, not on who's in office, on the God of the universe who sits on the throne. And the other thing we have to understand is that our unity will impact eternity. We're here for this long, that long, right? The grass will wither. The flowers will fade and they'll go away. We're, we're here for a split second, guys. Make no mistake. Don't invest your life, heart, and soul in the material stuff or invest it in loving your God and loving others. If you got that material stuff, awesome, share it. <laughs> share it. And let's bring more people to Jesus. In 2 Corinthians, it says, all this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That's bringing us together. That's praying for that crazy aunt or uncle that you go, oh, I gotta pray for him because if I don't, die. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. Stop. Here's how God operates. So cool. <laughs> Especially in my younger dating life. Because remember when you'd, when you'd mess up and whoever you were dating, like three months later, they'd bring it up and say, you remember that one time when you did me wrong? When you did this in our relationship? Right? God doesn't do that. When you sin and you say to God, I, wow, I'm I'm sorry. I repent from that sin, and you turn from it. God says, forgiven, and he doesn't bring it up again. It's gone. It's gone. He doesn't hold your trespasses against you. It's an amazing concept. I would, I would have had a lot more dates, I think. They remembered everything not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors. Huge word, ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us, through you, that we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. We have been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ and so here's what that means. You, me, we all have that ministry now. That's an awesome responsibility. 
You know, like I got to iron. I got, I got the ministry of Jesus Christ. I got to go out there. God has entrusted me to that. And the reason I highlighted the word ambassador is because an ambassador is pretty special, right? An ambassador is not elected for the task. An ambassador is chosen. We have been chosen. That's awesome. For God, for this task, an ambassador works to bring unity among lots of people. Lots of people of different backgrounds and races and creeds and colors and religions. And that's what an ambassador does. He or she is chosen and given this awesome responsibility that says unify. And that's what we've been given. In John 15, it says we're appointed to bear fruit. And a healthy tree bears good fruit. So take a look at my daughter. Ah, She's awesome. She's awesome. Or your friends. I'm gonna put your family aside here for a minute because you don't choose your family. (laughs) But you choose your friends. Your friends are are the family that you choose. And if you're you're bearing good fruit, you're getting influenced by your friends, they're getting influenced by you. And so we start looking at our friends and maybe our our daughters or the people that that are being influenced by you. Are you bearing good fruit? And what do they look like? So you did not choose me, but I chose you. God chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruits should abide. Abide in Christ. So that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. And that's true. That's true. Assuming you are asking for the will of God and you are doing what he created you to do. Are you? We may not all have the same opinions. (laughs) We definitely do not have the same opinions. Nowhere even close. That's what makes the church so beautiful is because we agree to disagree. We go, no way, man. I'm not voting for that guy. No way, man. I'm not voting for that guy. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do this. But at the end of the day, we put all that stuff aside because we have a common denominator in Jesus Christ. So we may not have all the same opinions. We may not all agree on politics. We may not even like the same people. But we all, as ambassadors of Christ, have absolutely the same purpose. Think about it. Jesus, the king of the universe, came to serve. And that's easy to think about. You go, yeah, yeah, he came to serve. I mean, he left heaven in the most humble means And the first thing that people would say about Nazareth back in the day, and by the way, Nazareth was such a small, insignificant Pueblo, it wasn't even on the maps. And I'm not kidding. The maps in biblical times did not have Nazareth on it. It wasn't there. And when Jesus shows up and says, I'm a carpenter from Nazareth, the response of people was, nothing good ever came from Nazareth, (laughs) except the king of the universe. That'll get Google to take a picture, put it on a street map. I mean, he left to serve us the most humble means, and Jesus modeled servant leadership. He led by serving, and it calls us to be united, to be faithful, to be humble, 
to love one another. And then think about it. So Jesus' time is coming to an end on the planet. And you know when I get the honor of uh, being with people when they're being called home to Christ. It's a humbling, humbling honor. Or talking to them before they're, when their time's getting short. And a lot of people say, hey, you know, I'm doing a bucket list, right? I'm doing, I am jumping out that airplane, you know? I'm 89 years old, I, I'm, I'm, I've never jumped out that airplane, I am going. I got a, a bucket list of things that I want to accomplish. And Jesus knows his time is coming to an end. He knows that. And he does not do a bucket list. Like many of us would. Rather, he models servant leadership and he gives something. He models humility. So we see here's what he does. In John 13, 4, they're having supper. And Jesus would have been in a, like a toga looking thing, in sandals, and he takes that off. Now he's about to die. What would you be doing the night before you're about to die, if you know you're about to die? Here's what he does. He takes that stuff off and he wraps a towel around him. So if you were at, you know, at work and you, you know, if I had like a nice jacket on or something and I was gonna go move the TV or do something like that, I'd probably take my, my jacket off so I don't tear it or rip it or, or stain it or something. That's what Jesus does. He takes that off, he wraps a towel around him because he's about to do something dirty. He's gonna wash people's feet. And let me describe maybe what this scene is. He's about to wash something because he needs a towel that he's wrapped around him because he's gonna use the very clothes that the very thing he's wrapped around him to dry what he's about to wash. Now the Jewish ritual says that they would have washed their hands and their, and their head prior to, to sitting down to this meal. That's kind of a cultural norm. But Jesus is gonna wash the dirtiest thing on their body. And before I tell you it's the feet, because you know it's the feet, let me describe where their feet have been. There's animals walking around on the streets. They didn't go strolling down Las Olas. There are animals walking around on the streets. Donkeys and chickens, and there's all sorts of animals walking around on the streets. And do you know what animals leave behind that they're stepping in and through and around? Yeah. And Jesus is gonna get down and he's gonna wash their feet. And that basin that he has with them with the towel wrapped around him, so he is down on his knees, he's washing their feet, and the basin that he's rinsing the water into would quickly be sewage. And that's what the king of the universe is doing. Oh, it gets better. There's this guy there named Judas. And he washes his feet too. The very man that's gonna turn him over. The king of the universe goes and washes Judas' feet. The king of the universe turns the world upside Side down, inverts everything, turns it over so we believe and we understand that he came to serve. And so do we.
as ambassadors. That's the awesome responsibility he's given us. I mean, that's one job. One job that we have. That's the the job that we've been given. You know, when you have one job, you're going to do it well, right? I mean, and I thought, huh, one job. You know those people when you go, you get a a birthday cake? I have an eight-year-old daughter, so I go to a lot of kids' birthday parties. When you go and you get the birthday cake at Publix or wherever you get in the birthday cake, and you show up and you go, hey, happy birthday. And the person behind the counter, you fill out the thing, and the person behind the counter, they got one job. They got to do one job well. Yeah. Thanks for a great year in purple. Man, is that a blunder. Can you imagine? Or how about this one? It's a grill! Some misspellings there. I mean, epic cake inscriptions that totally fail, and all this person had to do was one job. Look, if you got one job, let's nail it. Let's check the spelling. You are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We got one job, unification. We got one job, loving our neighbors. And as followers of Christ, we have been given this one primary job to unify the people of God. So don't mess it up. God will open a door for someone to to speak to you, for you to speak to someone, for you to smile at someone, to talk about what he has done in your life. That's why they call us witnesses of Jesus Christ because what does a witness, if you witness something happen in life, you can talk about it. And he calls us his witnesses to say, man, I've had a really hard life. And here's how God moves in it. Or man, I've had a really great life and here's how God moves in it. But you as a witness of Jesus Christ, living it, living and talking and walking it. So here is the challenge for all of us as we go into Thanksgiving. Talk about what he has done in your life. How thankful you are. That is a privilege And here's the real challenge. Pray like Jesus prayed for oneness in our church and love unconditionally even when you totally disagree. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much We love you so much and thank you for creating us as ambassadors of the risen Christ. Lord, we, it's it's tough for us sometimes. It is tough for us in 2020. It has been a gut punch to so many of us. These are tough times. And dear Lord, we thank you for these times because these are the times when we can take all of that stuff stuff and just hand it to you and say, Lord, take it. We are your ambassadors. And we ask you for your words and your graces as we speak the truth into other people's lives with wisdom and tenacity. Father God, we know that unity isn't impossible, that it is absolutely imperative and that our unity will truly impact eternity. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ and all of God's children say together, amen, amen. So I was reading in Proverbs, um, about generosity. 
And it's really about trust. It's not necessarily just giving stuff away, but it's trusting God. It's trusting God. And in Proverbs, it talks a lot about our trust and our, and our love, and if we really step out on faith, and if we really hand it to God, how, how we will be rewarded for things. But that's not why we're generous. That's not why we, we love thy neighbor. When we show our trust through giving, that's where we show our faith then we are truly ambassadors of a risen Christ. And so as you help this church, if you're online right now, uh, I'd ask you to hit that subscribe button, please, if you're watching on, on YouTube. And that bell over there will remind you when we're, when we're out here. If you're on our app or on, on any of our social media, there's lots of ways you can give back to this church. Come and worship with us. We'd, we'd love to see you. It's a great way to give back. Come and give somebody a hug. And so God asked to give back first. The very first fruits, not the last fruits, the very first fruits because that shows your trust in the risen Christ. There are so many ministry opportunities right now. When I said 2020 has been a gut punch, it has been. And guess what happens when people get punched in the gut? Glory to God. They reach out to their church. And we are honored and humbled to be there. And we need those resources to continue through our ministries. So there's several ways that you can give back to Florida Faith Church. Um, there's, if you're here at the, in the sanctuary, there's a, a box in the back with a cross on it. Surprise. <laughs> you can give there. Or if you're online or, or you give online, you can text the word faith give to the number 77977. You can give any amount. Um, you can, if you're on our website, if you're on our app, there's a button there that says give. And so we ask that you give back. We have a budget to make this year. and We're working hard on that one and we are so excited about what 2021 is going to be for this ministry.
And we lift up all of these things saying in unison, and we do this in two languages. We do it in English first and in Spanish second. Saying in unison the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase su voluntad en la tierra como en los cielos. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en la tentación. Y líbranos del mal. Amén. Amén. Thanksgiving week. So as you leave this place today, and maybe you're going out to enjoy the air show, it's really something else to see, so I encourage you to do that. As you leave this place today, know that you are a beloved child of God. And you have been commissioned as an ambassador of the risen Christ. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may he give you his peace and his grace and his love in your going out and in your coming in, in your lying down and in your rising up, in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears until that day in which you come to stand before Jesus, in which there's no sunset and no dawning. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving. Go in peace.